It was by far the worst storm to hit the entire region in recent memory. If you were here for Hurricane Isabel in 2003, you remember it. You remember the storm, the aftermath, and the recovery. And 20 years ago, the area was still in recovery mode. It took up to two weeks for some people to get their power back. Needless to say, as with any storm, the Outer Banks was hit very hard, and the scars from Isabel were deep. 10 on your side, Andy Fox went back to Hatteras to talk with a business owner who remembers everything all too well. Hope to rebuild. I mean, it's all we can hope for. All of us. This was Jay Metacarpa's Sandbar and Grill until September 18th, 2003, when Hurricane Isabel, like a thief, stole her away. It is always going to be there. It's, it's, it's like grief, you know, uh, it's like losing a family member. It would take Metacarpa six months to open a new sandbar and grill eight miles north in Buxton, but this atmosphere of being in Hatteras Village, all the people that we saw here every day, like we miss them, they miss us. It's never really been quite the same since. Yes, even after 20 years, not the same. And the old place still an empty lot. You think you were that, under a dark cloud? That, yes. They used to call me Hurricane Jane. <laughs> Just after opening the new place in Buxton, Hurricane Alex comes along and rips off the roof. All the ceiling tiles were on the floor. It was like the whole ceiling was on the floor. And I just sat down and cried because I couldn't believe I was going through this again. If you had anything to do with Hatteras Village, you were impacted by Isabel. What do you think when you look out here? Devastation. It's unbelievable out here. We just all got to come together and help each other out to get through it. This is the worst wind we've seen, the worst rain we've seen, the worst flooding we've seen. And this was the beginning of the breach of Highway 12, Isabel's ocean water storm surge carving out land until she meets the Pamlico Sound. In a half mile of road, three breaches of Highway 12, cutting off Hatteras from the world. The power of Isabel's force of water on display at the Albatross fleet, Captain Ernie Foster. Yes, yeah, tsunami tidal wave about two or three miles wide that hit us. Captain Foster has this picture of what was the Village Marina Motel, which collapsed due to massive storm surge and erosion. And take a look at this boat slip. It looked like this in Isabel. The wind pushed the water to the other side of the Pamlico Sound. And when that wall of water hit the motel, the weight of the water would then crush Captain Foster's docks. Remember that up yes, there? Yes. But it was Metacarpa we got to know best. We're taking a boat back and forth over here every day in hopes that we can salvage some of our life. See the we showed her the stories of long ago. Salvage part of your life. <sighs> as she remembers life before Isabel. 12 weeks, we had the best 12 weeks of our lives that summer. Ironically, in the midst of isolation and despair, Hatteras Village becomes an even stronger island community. The village came together in what was really the best time of my life in terms of everyone working to help everyone else. Hey, thanks a lot, Captain. Consider this, here in Virginia, $1.85 billion in damage, wow. destroyed more than 1,100 homes, 77 businesses, took down tens of thousands of trees, and remember, two million people without power. The Fox family, 11 days, no power and no generator. You know why? Because we didn't buy one beforehand, and you couldn't buy one after. It was the eleven. It was eleven worst days of our when, and for our family. It was awful. When you name all those statistics, I mean that's one thing. But then you see those personal stories. That's what brings it home. It really yeah. shows the power of water and the power of wind. All of these storms. And I loved what the captain said. He said it brought us closer together. It was a, a great two weeks that he was talking about. And Jane, you know, we we're with Jane all the time, and it seems wouldn't want those two weeks to come back, I'll tell you that. Ooh. No and way. The three of us were not here no. during Isabel, yeah. so it is fantastic to be able to learn about the storm from those that were, those that were down here. So Andy's got all the stories here. We're walking through the hallway, just incredible stuff, which 
teaches me a little bit more about the storm and what and how Hampton Roads can handle big events like that. And with Isabel, it was quite the one for sure because it was so strong for so long. It built up that storm surge. It built up the momentum of water, so to speak. All that energy can't be created or destroyed. It's transferred, so it's got to go somewhere. So there's the landfall. And Hatteras and the Outer Banks had everything. Had the surge, had the wind, had all of the rain. But then further up towards Hampton Roads, it was kind of a perfect setup with the orientation of the storm for all of that water, that surge, to just get funneled in to all the estuaries of the, of the Chesapeake Bay and the bay itself. That's why it's the second highest uh, uh, tidal flooding event on record here, just behind the 1933 hurricane. Now